Like, I want to find out where this goes to. Okay. Okay. It's showing me that's where it's going to. It highlighted right away. Okay. If I want to find out where this goes to, it shows me that this has been routed to an input. Yes. And when I go to that page, it's yellow. It's highlighted. It's showing me that that's where it's going. That's where it's going. When okay. you hover over it, it shows you where it's coming from and where it's going to. Okay, that's kind of how you mm -hmm. find your way. And if there's signal there, because right, you missed right. this, if there's signal there, it shows you signal right there. I saw that. <clears throat> okay. Can you, can you edit anything from that that no. view? Okay, no. so I and can't edit the name. Edit or, okay, I'm just, this just curious. Just, the things that you can do from here besides just uh, configuring things and, and, and assigning things is you can actually break open these boxes and you can look at the back of that box okay so again uh, what was that would you hit to get that view there's a wrench in the corner of all the boxes hold on there's a wrench in the corner of the boxes and you click on that wrench and it opens it up and what it gives you is is in this particular case here's the 24 uh, uh -huh. uh, jacks one of you get them right. at a time yeah yeah um i can turn phantom power on from here and i can adjust the analog mic pre from here if i want to a couple of reasons for that but the biggest reason for that is is i can take and i'll give you a good for instance you're going to film a school play the microphones are up front. You're hanging the microphones from the ceiling. You can plug them into the box, route from this jack and this jack, which you're not using, over to these two jacks over here, which you're not using, next to the video camera. Assign phantom power to it and give gain to it and put it into the camera, never going through the console, not using any of the console resources, so I can use them as tie lines back and forth, yes? Okay, so if I want to know where this appears, it shows me that this jack that I've hovered over appears on this page. Uh, you want to go into your preferences, and in your preferences you want to... Uh, Set a few parameters that you like. Uh, okay. okay. Um, uh, Master Slave uh, DL 431s. This is for a use if you're going to tie two consoles together and share one box. Um, so I can do front of house and monitors without having to use a split snake. I can just take it all off of one box. Okay. Um, and then you would use these. A DL431 is the box that comes with the input box, the 24 channel input box that comes with an XL8. It's a very cool, uh, useful piece. It's got five AES50 stems, so five consoles can connect to it. Three of those have their own mic pre's. So the front of house guy, the monitor guy, and the broadcast guy all have control over their own mic pre's plus their digital game, which is really important uh, for like award shows and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And you know, when you're dealing with broadcasters uh, or recording trucks, they want control over their mm -hmm. own gig, yes? Mm -hmm. We have a tap button. And you can select whether you want to use a foot switch or that for tap or whatever. How are you going to run your outputs, whether you're going to run it standard left, right, center, or whether you're going to do a quad thing or, a, or anything like that. Here is where you choose how many onboard effects you're going to use to how many graphic EQs you're going to use. Okay. Because that's finite because of the because DSP. Because it's finite right? because of the DSP. We don't do uh, dynamic DSP allocation. So you don't end up on channel 57 and realize that you've used too many compressors or whatever. It's whatever you select, everything's available, all of it. If you're doing a front of house gig, you probably don't need that many graphic EQs. If you're doing a monitor gig, you probably don't need that many effects, but you definitely want, probably want a lot of graphic EQs. Yeah. And it depends on who you are, but you have that ability. Um, 
these are your user uh, areas, uh, your user preferences. Um, <clears throat> whether or not when when you touch these, whether it, you notice it gave a little highlight box mm -hmm. to show mm -hmm. you. If I click this. When I touch this, not only is it going to give you a little highlight, but it's going to give you the numerical value. Okay. Okay, so it's going to tell you 0.05 or whatever. Mm. Okay. And the default um, is just the highlight. It's, yes, it's whatever you want. Well, um, I'm just saying when it, it yeah, defaults yeah. to it when you power it. Okay. Yeah. Um, fast zone delay control, I'll show you. It's an option that you would <coughs> use on uh, uh, setup normally. Uh, Touch navigation detail area. This is when I do this, and you see it's switching to each section. You can shut that off. It's on, but you can shut it off. For some people, like me, I don't really like this. I like to go up and touch the button uh, rather than having it because I'm lazy and I do this, and all sorts of things are firing off all over the place. So you know, my screen's always changing. It's for some people, it's better that they don't do this. Um, uh, global tap, flash continuously, like when I did this and the tap flashed just a couple of times, if I check this, it's going to keep flashing the whole night. Okay? Some people like that. Um, I'll get into this collapsed flip thing in a second. You have some standard uh, Navigation settings. Normal front of house and normal monitors will pre assign your channels for you. That's what I'm talking about. And pre assign uh, some EQs for you in the monitor thing, but it shuts these buttons off. Permanently or? Yes, as long as you're in that mode. The, the only time you really get these buttons, all of these buttons, are in the advanced mode. And I'll explain that in a Okay. okay. Uh, so you won't be able to pull up your graphics on the fader bank? Correct. Because for somebody who's not really that familiar with how to use the desk, having faders flipping down and outputs over here and graphic EQs down there may just be too much for them to sure. handle. Sure. So you can shut it down. Let them start right. baby steps. Right, exactly. You can shut baby it down. Um, <laughs> and, and really, I'm getting very deep I'm into this console uh, uh, right away with you guys. But if you were to show somebody, and I'll do this in a second, if you show somebody how to mix on this console, save for the, you know, all of the background material, if you just said, here, you want to walk up and mix on it, probably three minutes, five minutes, and the guy's done it, and it's done. That's what um, we're going to say. We need that part, too. For the but <laughs> but for the reason I'm going into the depth of this is so that you understand how the network is, so you understand how to run things. Mm -hmm. uh, because at some point, you're going to sell it to a church or somebody, and then they're going to call you up on Sunday, and they would have done this. Uh, I'll show it to you. Sorry. They're going to hit this button. And that button is going to clear everything out. All their headphones, their monitors, Phew. their outputs, everything. <laughs> Done. Gone. Bye. They're going to have to repatch. Is that in the advanced section or in the front of house section? No, it's, it's right there on the screen. If somebody Everything. goes into the patch. So, and there's no, are there. you and sure? Yes, there is okay. an are you sure. <laughs> okay. When you hit it, it says, are you sure? <laughs> but if you're They're like cool. me, who, when it pops up in the window on your computer and it says, do you want to do, do this? Yes, it? yes, 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 yeah. yes. And I don't bother reading anything. Uh, you're going to clear out the whole console, and then you're going to get a call on a Sunday morning from a parishioner who's going to say, I can't get past signal, and you're going to have to know how to get them back. Well, what uh, your patching can be saved. Though. I mean, aren't they saving their patching as they go? And you can say, hey, call up. They may not know how to save or recall anything. Okay. So just, you're going to have to know how to save things, recall things, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Sure. That's why I'm bringing you this way. I, 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 okay. I like those little... Be careful of this yes. kind of thing. Uh, and there's a lot of those little be careful kind of things. And it all comes up and it says, you know, you sure you want to do this, man? Because you're going to ditch everything. Mm -hmm. And and uh, Yeah, that should be triple protected. That should be, are you are you really sure? That's where that should be. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. There's yeah. a lot of, you would have a lot of covered buttons. This is for stereo linking inputs and outputs. And this is your general overview page. So 
this gives you a starting point. So when you go oh, wait, to back up one second. We, we, we were on it. Uh, gain is where we started. We got to preferences to t was talking about gain, but I'm we gonna never. Give you, okay, I'm I just want to make sure you're not I'm giving you gain. Uh, uh, going off on a tangent here. I'm not going off on a tangent. <laughs> um, this is kind of your overview about of how you start your linking thing. So this way, if you always link your faders together, if you always link your mutes together, you can check, check this box off, you can tick this off, and then every time you go to stereo link a pair, it's going to come up with these things. You can go in right there, it has on each channel a link option, and you can deselect. But you don't want to have to select every time when you go to link channels the things that you're always going to link. You want to have a template for that. And then Delay compensation. I'm, I'll get very quickly into this. Our propagation delay, the time it takes things to crunch through this, is all measured off of your insert point. It's the worst possible place to measure something from. It's the longest possible point. And we're out at about nine milliseconds total. Okay? And this is, everything is phase coherent, everything is perfect at that point. Now, and that's assuming you are inserting everything, using every possible thing on it. That's as long as it's going to get. That is a super, super long time when you're dealing with any years. Nine milliseconds between here and here is like a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So we allow you to do a low latency thing. Not allow you, we give you the option. Um, and, and then it measures it off of the input. So you're at a very short uh, time thing. However, you've got to keep in mind that when you start loading down the console with a lot of effects, a lot of EQ, you're inserting things all over the place, that your latency is going to become an issue at that point. Not a huge one, but an issue nonetheless, and you have to pay attention to it. So you don't want to always run the thing in low latency, uh, uh, because if you start getting a real big show uh, going on where you're using a lot of effects and everything, you're, you might start hearing phase issues and stuff because you're, you're, you're referencing off of the quickest point rather than the longest point. Here you have a home button. Mm -hmm. Home button always brings you to one of these two pages no matter what. You also have a navigation, like a Windows navigation button, where you can go back to where you were and so on and so forth, kind of like a, a Windows bar. But there you go. Now. Let's talk about how it looks on console. So, your inputs, your VCAs, pop groups, left, right, center. Detail strip and your aux synth. Touch a channel, it's going to bring up in this window the detail to that. You touch one of these buttons and it's going to explode that area. Okay, and also if you touch there. And you notice I turned on the display mm -hmm. rotary values, so when I touch something, uh, uh, a knob, it's showing me the rotary mm -hmm. value of it. When I touch a slope, it's showing me the rotary value of it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going go to I'm gonna go to input one because there's something there. Uh, uh, you have to be patched to something that has a, a mic pre on it. Or uh, you're not going to see the mic break. So you can see that in the stage box we have something patched. Okay, and here's your mic pre's. That's your analog gain, and that's your digital trim. How are you switching oh, so back and forth? There's a swap button right there. Sorry, that's okay. exactly why I don't like doing that. Right. So there's a swap button. Hey, Matt, come on. So I'm going. Oh, okay. All right. And the reason I'm not seeing uh, mic pre's here because is we're not patched. Because there's nothing in this. No pre to patch to it. There's Meaning no we never went into the patching page. I never took any of this I/O from either the front of house or any place else and sent it and to, sent it to okay. the input. I never did it. Okay. I only did the two things: the one surface thing and the other thing, and that's all I did. Okay. So all you're going to see is those. All right. If I go in and I take and I do, uh, uh, I'll just take a bunch of them really quickly. So, if I take uh, all of these here, for instance, I'm lousy at this, mm -hmm. and I just kind of plop them over here. So now when I go back in 
up for here, you notice okay. here they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's cool, though. Yeah. So that is so analog. It is analog. You are controlling the actual analog mic pre. Mic pre. And, and here's why this is important, because the mic pre's we are using are Midas mic pre's. It's the reason why everybody wants to use a Midas desk. Whether it's an old analog desk or a new digital desk, you know, XL3, XL4, Heritage, all of that mic pre design is all this same thing. Um, and the EQs are all designed by Alex Cooper, who did all of the algorithms and the shaping for it. So it's XL3, XL4, Heritage uh, uh, um, uh, algorithms. So, you know, it's the sound of the console. And how you get the most out of that is, is you can uh, uh, put a lot of gain on the on your digital on your analog, analog mic pre, okay, um, and then uh, turn your digital trim down, okay, and and back off on your digital gain, and back off on on the digital gain. So I can really heat up that, that analog mic pre and get that warmth and that tone out of it. There is a thing called a check button right here, uh, and I will demonstrate this, and hopefully without spilling my coffee. Just quick question. One, two, one, what? Okay, so. Paul, I had a quick question. A quick question. Between the, uh, usually the digital, the digital box for yeah. digital console, they have uh, the digital trim on the stage box and, and also the analog right. mic pre on the board, right? Right. On the board. On here? On here, I it's have, the same. I have the analog mm. mic pre mm -hmm. and the digital trim on the board. I can grab. Oh, okay. So I, I don't need to you connect need to like to the uh, ES232 no. pro control the no, protocol. No, no. That's one of the cool things about it. Yeah, that's one of the great things about it. And, and what I'm going to do right now. So here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this uh, microphone, number one. Carl, who is number one. Carl, who is number one. <laughs> so <laughs> right here is my analog mic pre. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the stage box, if you will. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, it's the back of the console. And I'm going to hit this meter check button. And if you see this meter down here, it's kind of hard to see right over here in front of the microphone. Hold on. Check, 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 check. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to step on it. I'm at like plus 9, plus 12, which if you had done that with a digital gain, yes, um, yeah. you, it, would, it would gack out. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to heat this up so it sounds good. And then I'm going to swap over to my digital trim, and I'm going to adjust that to where I want it. So my overall gain now is minus four, zero, plus three, something reasonable. But I'm heating that mic pre right up. That's way up there. Okay, so I can really get the warmth and the tone out of it. Yeah, I got you. Because if you distort an analog mic pre, it's distortion. It's a little buzzy. It's distortion. If you gack out an A to D converter, it's bad. It's bad. So I can quickly do my analogs and then quickly do my uh, okay. digital trims, okay, okay? And, and move it down and, you know, hit my mutes or, you know, work with uh, my dynamics or my uh, whatever I want to work with. So in your head end, you have uh, uh, your insert and you can change where you want your insert to arrive, he, which oh, is... Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. Which is, uh, you know, before your processing, after your mute, after your fader, um, you know, so where you want that to drop in. Um, you have your dynamics. You have four different types of dynamics on each input that you can choose from. You have some creative ones, so you have four different types of uh, pre's, and then you have a gate on every channel. Okay? Cool. Um, you also have a ch side chain that works on both of them where you can sweep in. Uh, yeah. uh, and make it a bit frequency dependent, and you can change that width mm -hmm. and what you have going in there, and then you can listen to it. Yeah. Um, and on your EQs, every input has four bands of fully parametric EQ to work with. Uh, your upper and lowers have um, shapes to them that you can select from. And I've been told, but I can't confirm this, this is heritage. This is XL4 and this is XL3 uh, uh, algorithms in there. Wow. Um, notice that this is shut off 
uh, but somebody dialed an EQ in there. If you want to clear it out, you just push and hold to both buttons, and then it clears out your whatever you've done. Um, and then you have your master section. Left, center, right. It shows you if you're assigned to a pop group or a VCA or any of that stuff. You have your aux sends, and this is where you do your contributions. You have 24, you have 16 aux sends and 8 matrices. Really, the difference between an aux and a matrix is you can send an aux to a matrix, but you can't send a matrix to an aux. Roughly, that's the difference. There's a couple other things I'll show you. Here is um, uh, how you scroll through banks of eight, and then you just do your contributions. And if I'm looking at uh, uh, an aux output, these are somebody hit the links, and somebody changed them to groups. Auxes can be a regular aux send like you would use for an effect send or a monitor send where you turn up the knob and it turns up the level to it or um, it can be a group where you just turn it on kind of like you used to use groups in the old days where you'd say okay I'm gonna assign these four channels to group one and those four channels to group two same kind of thing um, or a mix minus which is really a broadcast thing because you're sending a broadcaster a uh, uh, like a left and right mix and you don't want to send him a double thing so you do a mix minus I don't know how to easily explain that but there you go here I have my link button to do stereos and it turns unlike your inputs which your left input stereos to the to the right one next to it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if they're odds or evens. On your auxes, it is uh, mix one and two, three and four, five and six. They're kind of and and then this becomes your pan, and that becomes your level in a stereo oh. situation. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, when you're in the head end of it, you can link them, and, and you see it links them. And here's what I was talking about, about link options. So this was the template you sent up in the preferences before. We were talking about how you have your templates and what you normally would do. But this is where you can make that change per input or per output. Okay. Uh, so if I don't want my faders to run together or what have you. Um, uh, again, just like on the all inputs, uh, all your outputs have a delay on them uh, and an insert point. You have five types of compression on your outputs rather than just four. Um, one of them is a creative one. Uh, it's called Shimmer, I believe. Shimmer. Um, there's no gate because you don't use gates on outs. Mm -hmm. Um, you do have the side chain that you can work with. And you have six bands of fully parametric EQ on each output or a graphic EQ. Hello? Okay. So if you're using your out outputs for floor wedges or whatever, you can throw a graphic EQ on them. Uh, if you're doing them for ears or you're using it for effect sense, then you might want to use a parametric EQ, so you have that choice. How many on board, Greg? Uh, that depends. You can split it up. You can, it depends on how many effects you use, but maximum is 26. Okay. Um, so if you're going to do a full-blown monitor thing, you can. Uh, and then you have different shapes on this, obviously. This is more like shelving. Uh, mm -hmm. because you're kind of working with structure. Sound one, please, and sound then line one, your outputs and, and how you're going to deal with that. Um, this mono output right there is always the fader, or most of the time the fader for your selected mix. So I'm in 10, it's going to be 10. Uh, I'm in 1, it's going to be 1. It's always going to be there's your fader uh, when you're in standard mode. So far, so good? This would be for monitor mixing mainly, where you get, have a wedge or here? Whatever. And you want, okay. Yeah, or whatever. All right. uh, you know, it's whatever I selected. So I'm bringing this up, uh, aux 2, and it's my reverb send. So that's my mm -hmm. reverb send. Okay. It's my master for that. A couple of very interesting ways of, and I know we've gotten off on a, on a sidetrack here, how you kind of navigate around the console. Um, you can do it simply by, you know, moving like a piano roll through things. Um, the better way of doing things is 
by a little, using a little pre-thought. VCAs? Everybody know what a DCA or a VCA is? Okay. Um, so I'm going to assign my VCAs. You do it just like on our old heritage. You push and hold it, and you say, okay, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this person. These are all VCA1. If you notice, everything else went dark except for the people that I've assigned. Okay? Opposite and that's direction. exactly what a pop a population group is. Um, uh, a population group is, let me just kind of scroll through and see what we have in here. We have a bunch of stuff, so I'm just going to pop these out for a second. Anything else? Anyone else? No. Okay. So you have, uh, you have eight VCAs, you have six pop groups, and pop groups are just that, they're population groups. So this is where I would say you would put your money people, okay? They may not have, and I'm going to use Michael McDonald for a good for instance. So he plays piano, he's got a keyboard there, and he sings. And you always want to make sure this guy is handy. But those gains don't have anything to do with each other. Some of, one of them is an electronic keyboard, which you may group one way. One of them is acoustic piano, and one of them is a vocal. And he may have a spare vocal mic as well. And you want to make sure that they're there all the time. Hmm. That's what you would use a pop group for, for instance. I would go in and I would say, all right, I'm going to take his vocal, his stereo piano, and his stereo keyboard. And they're all on this group. And I'm going to label that mic. And every time I hit that, his stuff is there. They don't share any gains. Mm. All it's doing is, is bringing this stuff to my hand. So I can be someplace else, mixing something else, looking around, and I can go, bam, and it just shows up. It's right there. So I'm not hunting for things, okay? Um, uh, and, and, it, and at that point, it becomes a uh, um, more of bringing things to you than you digging things, uh, digging things out of the console. Right, right. It's nice to have all those faders, okay? Here I am, I'm looking at this VCAs. I have all of these faders all over the place, but what happens if I need to get to his gate right now? The faders aren't going to do me any good. I need to have things on the console that are useful. So this is kind of why we set it up like this, where you bring things to your left hand that you want to see, and then you're able to adjust them with your right hand um, and, and go make the adjustments and have everything up in, in, in front of you that you need at all times. Um, in this screen, you're seeing a very detailed thing. In this screen, you're seeing the whole console. And I mean, you can go over and you can even select, I want to select this channel, and I want to drag the, you know, the input up from there, or I want to hit the mute button from there. I mean, you can do it. Uh, 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 not the right way to do it, but you can even get to things that way if you want to. So to deselect from that pop group. You just push and hold the button, yeah. and everything, if you see, oh, it's, it's docked dark. out. Okay, okay, okay. So you just go, all right. Let me find where they are, cool. and there you go, it's done. Oh, okay, and there's nothing cool. in the pop group. And the VCAs are exactly the same way. You're scrolling through so like a right, piano right. roll with your VCA, inputs, right. um, he can do it. but so if you everything it is up here. Right. Mm -hmm. you're, all your single yeah. purpose knobs are up here, and if you're in this mode, you can use, um, and these are your effects returns, by the way. Um, you have eight effects returns as well. But you, you can even grab things from up here if you want to, if you're in this mode, right. all right? Depending on where you are and what you're looking at. Now, there's a couple of different things you can do. If you really need to see handles, you can hit this button that says extend. And now I'm looking at 24 channels up oh. and running at the same time. So as I'm scrolling through, I'm scrolling through 24 channels at the same time, okay? I can look at my outputs. So this is all of my auxes up at the same time. If I hit extend, that's everything. So this is all of my outputs are right here. Hmm. Okay. Um, so I'm simply hitting that output button. Over here, I'm looking at my VCAs, or I can look at my outputs as well. So I can look at my inputs here and my outputs there. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of easy to bring things in and out of your hands. I'm going to show you some cool features and then I'll get into some automation and stuff. 
So let's talk about these advanced features. So I have flip. Um, and when I it, when I hit an aux output, okay, it's going to flip everything, all of my contributions to that aux, down to my input faders. In preferences, I'm going to collapse flip. I'm going to hide unassigned channels. So I select through things and I'm, I've got my flip button on. I flip and these are the things, if you remember, that I went in and I assigned. Okay? Nothing else appears. Very much like a pop group or very much like a VCA. Very good. Only what I've right. assigned okay. appears. Sorry. Only what I've assigned okay. appears here. So this is what the guy's hearing. In, if I'm doing monitors, in out of, out of monitor one or oxen one, these are the things. These are the con contributions that I have. Okay. So I'm going to give them a little bit more of nine, a little less of ten, what have you. Okay. Graphic EQ. If I have a graphic EQ assigned to aux one brings it down to the VCA faders for you, okay? So now you're looking at your frequencies of graphic EQ. If so if I have my flip and my graphic EQ assigned, when I'm tooling around, doing things, when I go to that guy, it's going to drop my graphic EQ to me and bring me what's, what are being contributed to that aux sound. Wow. What determines the, which frequencies I'm seeing? It's right there, 200, 250, 300, yeah, you, go back you just go through. Oh, that, with, with that. 8.1, okay. right. Yeah. Okay. You just go around. Okay, and that's layered right there on that switch you hit. Yep, that's it. It's just okay. the same thing. It's a piano roll. Okay. okay. Um, so you can just kind of get your graphic up there. All right, last cool feature. This is something that nobody else does, and it's going to take you guys a second to wrap your head around this. Master control associations. So I've determined what my membership is going to be for my VCAs. Drums, keyboards, vocals, right? And these are my VCA levels or contributions to my left and right send, yes? Okay. Master control association. Those memberships do not change. Yeah. Okay. If you notice on the VCAs, it now says Oxend 1 VCA, Oxend 1 VCA 2, yes? That's because my memberships are saying the same, drums, keyboards, vocals, that does not change. However, my levels can change for each output. So these are my VCA levels or, uh, or contributions to output one. These are my VCA levels for two. These are my VCA levels for three. These are my VCA levels for four, so on and so forth, okay? They don't change my VCA levels for my left and right outputs. Each output has its own uh, levels. Your membership stayed the same, your contributions can change. And what's really hip about this, especially when you're doing something like monitors, is you've now just spent 20 minutes with this guy doing drums for his in-ears. No, just a little bit more snare. No, no, a little less hat. No, a little bit mm -hmm. more of that, right? Mm -hmm. And then two-thirds of the way through the first song, the guy points at the drums and goes, more drums, more drums. So are you really going to take this and keep this in, right? No, you just go, more drums. There you go, more drums for that guy. That's it. Masters for... Mm -hmm. Which you yeah, think that, that was would a stereo be, year or something. Doesn't say. matter what it is. Would it link? Would, sure. Would that still just. It's not a group, the, it's just a DCA. Okay. That's all it's okay. doing. So, so, it, these so are the left, right show up on that one fader yep. instead of uh, linking two yep. faders. Yep. Whatever you've assigned, whatever you've assigned to that VCA, if this is stereo and this is what it's doing, then okay. you're doing. The one fader, okay. And this is something that you can't do on any other console. So, uh, Which makes perfect sense. So 
makes, you know, but now all you of them can, should work that way. But now you can see, going back into the preferences, when there was the, the novice controls. So if you have this button pressed and this button pressed, okay, and all of a sudden if somebody inadvertently walks up or has the master controller and he walks up and he hits select one and he doesn't understand, even if he has a grasp, he or she has a grasp of what a VCA does, and they've gone from uh, uh, their masters and all of a sudden they hit this button and all of their VCAs have changed, they're going to start doing this to try to get back to their VCA for they're not going to get it. So that's why you can, that's why you have the advanced feature in the, the pre-assigned features, okay? And that's why this does get a bit confusing. But if you if you're used to running the desk, and, and I want you to notice something, I'm so used to running these desks that I've not looked over to this side of the desk ever. I generally don't even look at the extra faders. There's just no need. I know where I'm going with this. I know what I'm looking for. Yeah. So every time I bring something, unless it's going to be something that has more contributions right. to it, you may be more comfortable having the more faders um, uh, because you're doing drums and or you're doing somebody and you don't want to scroll through to go find out what was there. Once well, so you decide the VCA channel, I mean, right. Yeah. Once, so you don't right. need to change. You don't need to touch any individual. Right. Images. And once you've assigned, yeah. um, once you've done a little bit of pre-thinking, and again, just to go back over this, this exact program is available online. You download it. Uh, it's free. You put it on your Mac, and you can do every single thing: labeling, uh, coloring. Uh, uh, assignments, everything online, take it on a thumb drive and just dump it in here. And, That's cool. and just bring it over. The other part, and kind of going to the effects thing, and I'll just open up an uh, uh, effects page. Uh, I see you've gone in and. Yeah, it looks good. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, these are all KT effects. Uh, we don't, ha unlike the Windows uh, uh, thing, we don't have a template where a manufacturer like a TC Electronics or a UA or somebody like that can just go, all right, here, here's my GUIs and here's my algorithms, okay, you have it. You know, you have reverbs, delays, flangers. We do a couple of interesting things. That four band, the square one dynamic <coughs> is eight individual compressors. When you go into your patching page and you look at your effects, you notice that you have eight ins and eight outs. Um, That's for inserts. No, these, this is this is the, this is this is your effects. Right, right, right. Okay. So an in and an out per thing. Kind of. Uh, Kind of a good thing to keep in mind because down the road, if we do fours and eights, it may not be compressors. It could be four little reverbs. It could be eight little reverbs because this is still considered when you go back into your preferences page and we talked about uh, uh, allocation of how many effects to how many graphic EQs. That's still one effect. Even though it's eight individual <coughs> things, it's still one effect. So uh, the more we develop stuff like this, yep. you'll have little useful tools to work with. So if you had a bunch of in-ears you were doing and you wanted to wet them up a bit individually, if you had a bunch of little reverbs. We do a couple of different things when you go into channel mode. So you can copy and paste sections, meaning if I did copy right now, I'm going to copy whatever is in this screen over here, whatever I have selected. Or if I have copy all, I'm going to copy the entire channel, whatever I have selected. I don't know what I have selected, but I'm going to copy the entire channel. Um, and the same thing with paste. I'm going to paste all, I'm going to paste just uh, uh, that or paste all sections, okay? So we do copy and paste. Just like a doll. The other thing we do is store and load presets, and you'll see that on every page. Okay. Um, preset manager and libraries, and I haven't got one loaded in here, uh, are where you would take and say, 
I developed this really cool kick drum sound. I have my EQ just right, I have my compression and my gate just right, I put an effect on it, I have everything all set up exactly the way I want it, okay? And it's this really cool kick drum sound. I can save that in my library as a user preset. Um, it is part of the automation, mm -hmm, okay, when mm -hmm. you switch through, if it's part of the thing that you saved in automation, it's part of that, but it's also a separate file that you can load separately as a plugin, your own plugin. Let's talk about automation. The automation that we have, our software works very much like a lighting console software in a lot of ways, okay? Is n normally, when you're setting up um, automation, you would do like one, five, 10, 15, and then you'd go back and add changes in between. This just kind of allows you to do one, two, three, four, and then if you want to make a change to one, like add something into one, you can just add a scene in between. Okay, uh, you can move scenes up and down uh, uh, and change the order of them. You can paste things back and forth through scenes. Um, you also have store and recall scopes uh, or safes. Okay, uh, every channel, all your ins, all your outs have hard safes. If you hit a hard safe on the EQ, no matter what you do, no matter what you change, it is not going to change the EQ on that channel. Okay. So, for instance, if the person had a, a, a lapel microphone that they were working with and all of a sudden that crapped out and they went to a handheld like this, and, but the EQ was totally wild, you could safe out the EQ, make the EQ on that channel to sound good for the handheld, and then when you went from scene to scene, you wouldn't have to do that change again. You could take it out of automation, okay? Um, and you can do that. It's like uh, a safe mode. It's safe, exactly what it is. And it's also a, control can affect to uh, master section too? Yep. Um, so it takes those things away from the automation. It takes those changes away from the automation as long as that button's depressed. If you have a more global issue, <laughs> um, like you set up a gain structure or an EQ structure, um, and you don't want that to recall when you hit it across the board or on one thing, then you can safe out things all the way across the board or, or uh, uh, um, in singles, just exactly the way you would have uh, uh, with patching, so I can safe out all the EQs if I want to, or safe out all the dynamics if I want to. Um, so they're not recalled. I can also, if I'm making changes, uh, uh, if I'm making changes to, all right, I'll be back. Things like EQs. Um, but I don't want to save those changes, really. Uh, uh, I don't want to store those changes. I don't want to overwrite the show that I have. I just want to make changes to the EQs while I'm doing it. Um, you know, I can safe these things out as well. Okay? So you have store and recall safe modes, if you will. So that's pretty much operation on the console so far.